Hi there and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to take a look at how to make your own PJ pants without a pattern. I have been doing this for a while and posting them on Facebook and overwhelmingly every time I post it I'm actually showing the shirt and everybody wants to know how I made the pants. I love to make these pants and pair them with shirts that I'm making with the Cricut Easy Press. I think it's a really fun gift and my grandkids are having a lot of fun. Now I'm relatively new to sewing. I'm self-taught. This is not a professional sewing video by any stretch of the imagination. And I found a few cheater methods that have worked for me that makes this a really quick and easy project. So with that being said, let's get started. Here's what you need. Pants that fit the person you're making it for, some fabric, a piece of elastic that measures the length of their waist, some paper, you can use newspaper, a pen, a ruler, a rotary cutter. We're going to set the everything aside except for our pen and our paper. We're going to open up our paper and again, you can use tissue paper, you can use newspaper, anything that you want. I'm just, I have this craft paper on hand, so that's what I'm going to use. Okay, I have these pants rolled up because I already tried them on Ace and they were a little bit long. So this is actually the size that these would make, I would make them for Ace. So I have my paper rolled out and the first thing I'm going to do is fold the pants in halves like so and you want the crotch to face the middle of the paper and the other side is going to face your straight edge or next to you so you can see i'm lining the pants up the straight edge is towards me the crotch is towards the middle okay so now you want to make sure when you place the pants on the paper that you have at least two and a half inches from the top of the fabric to the top of the pants or from the top of the paper to the top of the pants. So what I'm going to do right now is line my ruler up, make sure that I have at least two and a half inches. And if you're using a serger, um, you really don't even need this much fabric, but this is a safe place to start for a regular sewing machine. I am going to serge mine a little bit, but this is a good place to start. So mark the top of your pants and that is going to be where the waist is so i'm just marking where that waist is and i have two and a half inches above that so now you're going to do the same thing on the bottom you're going to mark that length and if you don't have the length just have somebody measure from the crotch the inside of the leg of whoever you're making it for down to the, as long as you want them. And that's the length you want from that crotch. So I made the hemline and now I'm adding two inches. You can go two and a half inches. We wanna keep things even, let's just do two and a half inches. And again, if you're surging, you don't need this much fabric, but I don't mind making them <clears throat> with a bigger hem so that as he grows, I can just let the hem out. So we've got the hem plus two and a half inches we made a mark, and we made a mark right where the bottom of the pant leg is. Now I'm going to put my ruler and measure over a half an inch past the leg. So I'm putting my ruler, so it's got a half inch past the leg, and you can freehand this. These are so forgiving and they're PJs, so it really doesn't matter, but you want at least about a half inch for your seam allowance. So I measured over a half an inch from the edge of the pants and drew a line from the crotch to the bottom of the leg and now i'm just going to sort of freehand right here and then you can't go a half an inch up here because this has elastic in it so that's going to stretch so i'm going to go off of this straight point right here and go straight up and make my mark and then just connect those two marks so that's the basics of making the pattern. That's really all you're going to need. I'm just going to use some scissors and cut my pattern out. And then I like to write who the pattern is for and the size just for future reference. But that's totally optional, up to you. Now I'm going to take this over to my ironing board and actually iron this pattern flat. Okay, so now we're ready to prepare our fabric. You want to pay attention if you have a directional fabric. I do. This has animals on it, so I want to make sure that the animals are, the heads of the animals are towards the waist, and obviously the feet of the animals are towards the foot. 
and I'm going to fold the fabric over just like so and I want to make sure that it is wide enough to fit my pattern. So that is wide enough. I could actually save a little bit more trying to save the pattern. But again, I'm paying attention to the direction. That's going to be the waist up there based on the direction of the fabric. Okay, so once I have my fold wide enough to cover the pattern or the patterns, the fabric's wider than the pattern by just a little bit so that I don't have a lot of waste, I'm going to fold that fold back on itself, kind of like you fan fold back in grade school when you made a fan. So I folded the fabric back and back again. So now I've created two folds, just like that. And I'm going to cut off that extra fabric. So it's looking kind of like this. And I'll show you another way to do it once I cut that extra fabric off. So again, I'm folding it down, picking up that fold, fold the fabric back again, pick it up again, and fold it down fan style. So I have two folds on one side and my raw edges on the other side. I'm gonna make sure those folds are lined up really well. Again, this is the hardest part and it's really not that difficult. I'm going to cut off that excess fabric past my fold. I don't need that, so I'm going to try to save that strip. A lot of times I'll use that for just a decorative tie to put on the front. So I'm just going to fold it in half and get rid of that excess right there. I'm just using my rotary cutter and there we go. And here's another way that you can create the same fold. I just find the other way saves a little bit of fabric, but you can see here, I've got my piece of fabric. I've got it folded in on one side. Again, I'm gonna check it to make sure that my pattern fits the width. It does. So I'm going to fold the other side in to the center. And I'm going to fold that in half. And now I have that same fold. Either way it works, what you're trying to do is create the two folds right there. All right, now that we have it, we are going to start by getting a clean edge for the top of our pajamas. And again, the two folds are facing me right now and the straight edge of the pattern is facing me. So I've created a straight edge. I'm going to line my pattern up right up there on the top on that straight edge. You can pin this pattern down. You can use pattern weights, whatever you want. You can tape it down, whatever works for you. But I'm just going to start by trimming off the length. And again, you can use scissors if you want. I prefer to use this rotary cutter. It just, these are so easy. I'm just going to cut along my pattern. I don't find the need to tape it down, especially if you iron your pattern so it's not rolling up or it's laying nice and flat. This doesn't have to be perfect. Again, these are PJs. I'm not too concerned about it. So we have our two pattern pieces cut out. Once you have them cut out, you're going to end up with two pieces that look like this. So there's one and you have an exact duplicate on the other piece. So you wanna make sure when you cut that you have the straight edge of the pattern on this side of the folds. Next, you wanna put this on your ironing surface and there's a couple ways you can do this as well. You can use your pattern. You know that it's two and a half inches down to the waist. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to put that pattern piece, measure it, make sure, I think I actually went two inches on mine, but if you have two and a half, that's perfectly fine. So you're gonna to go to the top and you're going to measure that down two and a half inches. 
So fold it down, make sure that measures your two and a half inches. And you're going to press. Alternatively, you can put the pattern behind the pants and just fold it down to that line. That's the cheater way to do it, the fast way to do it. But I find it just as easy just to measure down whatever your marking was. If you went two inches or two and a half inches, and go ahead and steam press that. And then I open that fold back up and just fold the top down about a quarter of an inch and press that. And that's going to secure your raw edges. Alternatively, if you have a serger, you can serge right along those edges. Once you have established that waist fold, I'm just going to double check it with my pattern. I'm going to lay the pattern. I'm going to line the crotch of the pattern up with the crotch cut of the fabric and just make sure that waist is where I thought it should be. Just double checking and it's right there. Now it's time to do the hem. So we're going to flip this around to the opposite end. And again, we added two and a half inches for that hem. I'm going to double check it. Two and a half inches. So I need to fold this bottom part down two and a half inches. And I'm using a seam gauge. I find this the easiest way to do it, but you can use a ruler, whatever you want to do. You could also just put the pattern behind it and fold down to that hemline. So again, we're steam pressing it and then we're going to open it and fold that in. And again, I have extra fabric here. That is with the idea that I can let this hem out as he grows a little bit because they're at the stage where they're growing, growing, growing. So I've got about a one inch hem on here. I like wide hems on PJs. I just think it looks cute, but you can do as little or as much as you want. So this is what your piece should be looking like once you have the hem and the waistline established. And if you were to fold it in half, just like so, you can double check it with your pattern and it should match pretty closely to that hemline right there and the waistline and it does perfect so now you want to repeat that same process on the second pant leg you're going to measure the top fold it down press it steam it turn it around measure the hem for the leg and press and steam that. You can use your first one as a template rather than measure, which is why I find it the easiest and the quickest. I've kind of got this down to a science. Fold it right down. I just using the one behind it as a template. I'm not even measuring. So once I have one done, I just use that, lay the other one right on top of it and use that for a template. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom of the leg. Now make sure when you do this that you line the crotch up of the fabric so that they are in the exact same position. But this also helps if you have any crooked lines or anything, it's going to keep everything so your pant legs match up from left to right pant leg. And here you can see I am doing the same thing on the bottom of the pant legs. I've got the crotch lined up and I'm going to Use the other one, make sure it's both folds are down. I'm going to measure up to there, press, and turn that raw edge under and press again. Making sure that both are the same. A disclaimer here, I am not a sewist, but I know that this is not the proper way to do this, but I think it's the easiest way to do it and it works for me. This is how I do it. If you want to hem them at the end, go right ahead, but I hem them right now. I think this just makes it so much easier than trying to hem around a round leg hole. And even if I let these out later, I just pick out a few seams and let the hem out and then I'll do it the traditional way. So on the bottom of the pant leg, make sure you're on the bottom, not the top. You're going to clip that into place and then we're just going to sew right along that edge, making sure that we caught that raw edge that we put in. 
So I'm just gonna sew a straight seam right down both of the bottom of the pant legs. All right, so both of my hems are in the bottom of the pant legs and I've unfolded the top. We folded that for later, but go ahead and unfold it and then fold one of the pant legs in half, right sides together, just like I'm doing here and match the bottom of the pant leg up and the crotch. And then you're going to pen or clip that into place. I like to do the bottom and then work my way up. And you really don't have to pin the top of this. We're not going to sew that part, but it helps just to keep everything in alignment so nothing shifts. Then you're going to do the same thing to the second leg. Fold it in half, right sides together. That hem that we put in the bottom, you want to line those up. Pin or clip it into place. Make sure that crotch is lined up. Everything should line up perfectly. Make any adjustments if you need to. All right, so now you're going to take this over to your sewing machine and you're going to sew from the crotch to the hem. That's it. Just from the crotch to the hem on both pieces. You're not going to sew from the crotch to the waist. Don't sew that part. Just this part on both legs. So go ahead and sew those up. Now you're going to use a half inch seam allowance. If you're not using a serger, you want to zigzag the outside edge of your fabric after you make your seam and that's going to keep it from fraying. So I have both of mine sewn and you can see the top of it's open, but it's sewn from the bottom down. You're going to turn one leg right side out and leave one leg wrong side out. So it should look like this. One leg's wrong side out, one leg's right side out. You're going to reach inside the wrong side out and grab that other one and pull it inside that pant leg just like this. I know this seems really weird, but it works. Now you're going to match those fabrics up. You should have right sides together and one's inside of the other. You're going to match the crotch up first. So match the crotch of both pieces up and pen. And then you're going to pull that fabric out. And again, everything should line up perfectly. You're going to finish clipping it all the way to the top, down one side and up the other side. So again, this looks kind of weird, but it's going to work. Make sure everything lines up. Line that crotch up first though. And then if you have excess on the top, you can work it out later, but you want to make sure that crotch is lined up, but everything should even up. All right. So it should look like this when you're all done. We've got two pieces together, right sides together, just like this. And then we've clipped up one side and down the other. Now you're going to take it to your sewing machine and you're going to sew down one side, one continuous seam right up to the other. So you're going to go down around the crotch and back up. I like to backstitch around the crotch just to reinforce that, but that's up to you. Here's another view of it. Should look like this. You're going to sew from one all the way around and back up. I have a serger, so I'm just going to serge this. But again, if you're using a regular sewing machine, sew with a half inch seam allowance, and then you're going to zigzag those edges so that your edges don't fray. And here is the sewn project. Again, I surged mine. That just saves me from having to sew and then zigzag. I can do it both in one step. If you have a serger, these things are so fast to make, but you can see my finished edges right there. They're sewn together. So you're going to reach inside and pull one pant leg out. Ta-da! Starting to look like pants, huh? I think that's so fun. You think, what in the world am I doing? So it should look like this. Double check your crotch. Make sure everything is closed. 
Now we're going to fold down that waistline using those steam marks that we already made. That's why we did that. That just makes this part go so much faster, so much quicker. You're going to fold that top down a quarter inch and then fold again. Again, if you had a serger, you can, you can skip that quarter inch fold at the top and just fold it down. Serge the edge and then fold it down. It's not going to fray. But I wanted to show you how to do this in case you don't. And I'm just pressing that down so that it's nice and pressed into place. So it should be looking something like this. Now we're just going to clip around the top of them. You can pen this into place, use these clips, whatever you want. I like using the clips. I can get them off. And you can use way more clips than this. I actually find the less I use, the better I do. I'm going to mark with a pen right to the, about an inch to the left and an inch to the right of either the front or the back. These are reversible. You can wear them either way. But you want to leave a gap right there at the middle in either the front or the back. You're going to sew all the way around except for between those two pens. That's how we're going to thread the elastic in. So here you can see I've sewn that hem down all the way around except for between those two pens. I have left this opening. Everything else is sewn. Now we're going to use a safety pin on the end of our elastic piece. And I like to do this little trick. Helps me out tremendously. I just like to put a dot on both ends of the elastic. And this just helps me know that I've, I've got it twisted or not. So once I have my elastic hooked to a safety pin. I'm just going to thread it through. I'm sure you're all familiar with how to do this. I'm just using the safety pin to thread it through the top of the PJs. I'm using that opening that we left to get in there. And I'm going to come around to the other side and back out that same opening. Now I have both pieces out. You can see while I put the dots on there, I can make sure they're facing the same direction. I'm going to pull it out a little bit. I'm going to overlap them by about an inch. And then I'm going to sew two different lines just to secure those together. I like to go forward and backwards and I use a zigzag stitch. Once it's secure, just go ahead and pull those pants across the top and that elastic will slip right into place. And now you just need to take it to the sewing machine and sew up that little opening that we left. And that's it. All you have to do is turn these right side out and wait for it. Ta-da! You just made your first set of PJ pants. Again, I am no seamstress. I don't claim to be a seamstress. I don't claim to know what I'm doing. I barely can read a pattern. I don't use patterns. I just kind of figure it out as I go. And this is the method that worked for me. I have got this down to a science. I can whip up a set of PJs in about 10 minutes. And the kids are having so much fun. I can't tell you how many pairs I've made. These are just a very few of them. I've made probably dozen pairs if not for more. Each and I think it's so fun. Kids. I pair it with shirts that I make with the Cricut Easy Press. I'll go into design space, find something that matches, cut a piece of fabric, put some heat and bond on it, make it match the pants. And it just makes really cute little sets of PJs. And the kids have a blast going to the fabric store and picking out what they want. You can tell Ace is a big dinosaur nut. He has umpteen pairs of every time we go to a store to get fabric to make jammies, he goes to the dinosaurs. So again, I'm a novice. This is what works for me. This is a super cheaters method. Totally not correct. So please leave the critiques out of the comments because I really don't care. This works for me and it works for now. And I'm really not concerned about them being perfect. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, share, click that notification button so that you know when I have a new video up. And if you guys make some PJ sets, I want to see them. Please tag me on social media. Till next time, never stop making. See ya. Bye.